You can use Photoshop's generative fill not just for photos. For example, if you need to take out a light from your shot, you could do that. Or how about extending the shot so that I can pan and add more graphics over there? Take this drone shot for example. I don't like how the horizon is basically empty. Here's a mountain. Also, this monitor behind me isn't real. Tricked you, didn't I? Yeah, get used to it. And now for the tutorial part where I get into more details and such. Taking out the light is the easiest part. Export a screenshot from your editor of choice. Make sure you export it as a PNG because PNGs are higher quality than JPEGs. Take that screenshot into Photoshop, draw around that light click generative fill and type something like remove. Well, that was easy. <laughs> now export this back also as a PNG and bring it back into Premiere, mask out the area that's been removed and you get yourself a removed light. Now, how do you extend the frame? Back to Photoshop, go to the crop tool and extend the working area. Then with the rectangle tool, select the entire outside area that hasn't been generated yet and also get a little bit of the original image in there. For this, you just have to press generate, no need to type anything, and then just go through however many iterations you want until you find a result that you're happy with. Export this back as a PNG and import it back into Premiere right on top of the original shot. Nest both of them and go into that nest. Change the dimensions to the same resolution that Photoshop spit out with the extended frame. You can find that out by going to the original file that Photoshop just exported, right clicking on it and pressing properties on Windows or get info on Mac so that you can take a look at the exact dimensions, apply those dimensions in the nest and line up the two files so that they're seamless. You can probably use the crop tool or linear wipe to try to get rid of one half of the image while keeping the talking head in there. Go back to your original timeline and now we have an extra wide video that you can pan way more than we could have originally. From here, just add your pan animations and maybe some blur effects and you're golden. Last but not least, let's add a mountain on this drone shot. We'll have to do this in After Effects, but the principles are all all the same except for the tracking part. Export a frame from your composition and add it into Photoshop. Again, make sure you're exporting a PNG. Select the horizon with the rectangle tool and just type in mountains. Yeah, this is uh, this is this is pretty good. This is pretty good. Go through a few iterations and you'll find the right one. Export the screenshot back into After Effects and mask this shot so that we only have the mountains. Now hide this layer because we'll come back to it later. Shh, just just need a just need a sip of coffee, you know, just. On the original clip, apply 3D Camera Tracker, which is After Effects' native plugin for 3D tracking. Select Detailed Analysis. Once it's done, select an area of points around that horizon, right click, and choose Create Null and Camera. Press P on that null object and copy its position properties. Turn on this mountain layer again and click on the 3D cube icon to turn it into a 3D layer. Press P on that mountain layer and paste the position properties that we just copied from that null object. Now do some minor repositioning in 3D space and there you go. <laughs> I'm gonna lose my job. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna lose my job, no. You know, this tutorial is gonna be obsolete when Premiere and After Effects get generative fill probably next year or something, you know. All right, nice seeing you.